Hi. So today I'd just like to uh, go through another one of the blocks for the Great Foundations Block of the Month. This is uh, one of the quilts, one of the settings that uh, we're going to be working towards. We've got nine different blocks and we've already done uh, block one and we've done block two is up here. And today I'm going to go with you how we, we can do this block three. So this is the block here. It's kind of like a little twirling star this time. It looks like it's going round and round, as I'm sure that most stars do go round and round. We just don't know that. So if you remember in your pattern, if you're making these blocks, the pattern is available on gourmetquarter.com to purchase and download for the nine blocks. Um, so we've got the block showing here, and I've, I've suggested some sizes of fabric that you might need, uh, pretty much the same as we've been using, like a four-inch strip, half the width of the fabric. But one of the fabrics, just take note, is using a full width of the of fabric, a 42 inch strip. And that's this fabric that we've got, there's quite a lot of that, so you needed more than half the width of fabric, so we've gone for a longer strip on that one, just so that you're aware of that. So what, usually what we've been doing is, with our pattern pieces, is cutting them apart. Um, there's a little dotted line around the outside, which is our final cutting line. The solid lines are for stitching on. I'm sure you know all this by now. And so we're going to roughly cut them out so that we've got them ready to start sewing our pieces onto. And also we're going to cut our fabrics into the suggested sizes or however you prefer to do it. Um, and then label them so that you know which is colour one, colour two, etc. Because that will help you when you're positioning them onto your foundation. Um, so I'm just using the regular paper for the foundations. Of course there are other ways of doing it but this is what I'm showing you at the moment. So I've already cut my pieces out, and this time we're needing, I've used two background fabrics for mine. You may only want to use one, um, in which case you just need to double the numbers for that. Um, and I've suggested just some narrow strips because it is only a very narrow wedge that we're using there. So we're going to place that right sides down, so the wrong side of the fabric is to the back side of the paper. And I find that I use a little light source. You might have a light box or something. I've just got this little lamp that seems to work quite well. Um, so I've got, I'm going to position that so that the fabric extends beyond the outside dotted line because we're going to trim it back to that later. And you could pin these, glue them, whatever you like. Today I'm going to clip them because clips are not sharp. And pins usually get me. Um, and then I'm going to, so that's my background, so you can see the right side. And then I'm going to position the next piece. This is colour one. This is from that longer strip of fabric. And I'm just going to position that so that you can see a seam line beyond this first line that we're going to sew. We're going to sew the line between piece A1 and A2, right on that line. So you need an extended seam line along there. So I'm going to... Just go to the sewing machine and sew that. This is fun, we're getting a little collection of blocks going on here. So remember we were going to work with a shortened stitch that helps perforate the paper and make it a little bit stronger for when we tear the paper out. And we're just going to stitch along, right along on that line, not near it, not next to it, on the line, all the way to the other end, out beyond the block line. So, and now I'm going to just trim back that seam. So we, I'm going to fold back. So on the stitching line, I'm going to fold back the paper so that the fabrics that we don't need are extending beyond that. And then I'm going to get my rotary cutter and ruler. And I'm going to lay that quarter inch in line right along my actual stitching line. You may find it easier to turn this over at this stage, as long as you've got the right bits of fabric sticking out and put it so that the quarter inch line in is right along the edge of the folded paper. That may work better for you. It might be easier to see. Sometimes their stitching lines are not that obvious. Either way, you just want it so that there's like a quarter of an inch seam allowance extending beyond the seam that we've just sewn. And then we're going to press that in place. So I'll bring that iron over. So this is much the same as we've been doing. Um, 
it's kind of more of the same, I, I guess, with the foundation piecing, but uh, just running through it. So this block has eight sections, and block two had also had eight sections, so we've got that one on there. Then we need to come to our next piece, which is going to be colour two, which is piece number three, and go through the same process. Uh, so we're making eight sections. They're quite similar, the sections. Um, some of them have got um, an extra piece to the other ones. So I'm going to turn this over. So I'll press that so that that's all sitting nice and flat now. Then I'm going to position this along the line that joins to colour two. So again, you can see through, I think you can see through, just to brighten that up a bit. Again, with your seam allowance, just sticking beyond the quarter, like roughly a quarter of an inch beyond where you're going to sew. And then I'll go to the sewing machine and get that sewn and we'll continue on with our piece. So I've gone ahead and I've finished sewing all my pieces on. So we had our colour one, two, three and four. So all the colours on this piece and now it's looking a little bit odd but we, now we need to trim it back to the right size. So that little dotted line that's around on the outside edge is our cutting line, not the solid line, that's a sewing line. And so I'll just get this trimmed up so that we can have a look at the segment as it should look when it's done. So there are eight segments, but in actual fact, there's sort of four and four. Um, you're repeating a segment to get all the corner, all the triangles made. So, and there's these, these funny little cutting lines on these sharp corners, which do actually help when you're putting it together if you've trimmed off those funny little shape bits there. That's all marked on the pattern. So that's the segment. So that's segment A, and that's got all of those colours in it. So then we've also got to make another, gone ahead and made the other segment. So this is segment B. And this one doesn't have that fourth colour in it. It's only got three colours, so it's just slightly different, but otherwise fairly similar. And they're going to go together to form one of the corner areas. Can you see all this down here? This is going to sit here. And then I have gone ahead and made the other segments. So that's when they join together. And then you join two together to make half the block. And then obviously it's going to all come together to make one block. And don't forget when you're joining them together, when you do this part here, before you do that, once you've got them joined together like this, I've been pressing the seams open, so my seams are all pressed open. I find it when we've got these funny little corners and things, that helps a lot. And before you join, when they're at this stage, before you join them together, I suggest you pull out that little bit of paper in the seam area down there, because it just reduces some of the bulk for when you're joining it all together. Um, and that helps quite a lot. You can take the whole lot out if you want to at this stage. Um, I have found it's quite helpful to leave the papers in for me, but that's up to you, of course. So don't forget to just pull, pull the papers out of the seam allowance area there when you join them together here. And you can do the same thing when you join the two halves. Take these bits out ready to join the halves, just to reduce the bulk in the heavy traffic area of points and bits of material. So that's our block three, a twirling star this time. And I've made it up in a couple of other colorways as I have been doing, just to show you in case you're not so keen on these delicious Japanese talk colors. So I've got a nice bluey greeny one, got a nice gray one, and a really bright one. Um, just to show you the same block, exactly the same, but done in quite different colors. So I think it's quite interesting to see how that all comes up quite differently. You can have a different emphasis. This one is quite strong on that center. This one has got a stronger little pinwheel going. You know, it, it's all a matter of how you do the colors as to how things are going to look. So I'm getting quite a collection of blocks now. So apart from my other color ones, we're now up to block three. So we've got block three, block two, and block one. So getting quite a good little collection going. It's starting to feel like something's happening. So that's quite fun. So that's the block of the month, Great Foundations. The, the pattern is available to purchase and download on my website for the nine blocks and later will become available patterns to purchase for the settings. We've done three different settings um, and this is the third one um, as we've been going. So you, you get an idea of how it can look if that's what you want to do with your blocks. So blocks are measuring, it's all written in your pattern. 
They should measure 20, 10 and a half inches because it'll be a finished 10 inch block. So that may help you. Um, just make sure that your sizing's right on your pattern pieces before you actually start sewing them so that you're getting the right size blocks. So that's great foundations block number three.